Today on Codependent, we'll be continuing our conversation about more lifelike animation. So in a previous episode, we saw how to make a Flex 3 application, uh, an animation of a, a ball on the screen, more lifelike by applying um, old uh, premises of stretching and squashing to that object. Um, so I'm going to take the same ideas and the same discussion and apply it to uh, Gumbo code. Uh, Gumbo is the code name of the next release of Flex. Um, so you might want to go back and watch that previous episode because I'm not going to cover all the sort of animation uh, intrinsic stuff that we talked about before. So if you want to go check that out now, that'd be good. Okay, so moving on to Gumbo, we're going to talk about uh, what we do in the new effects model. I should always mention with Gumbo that it is really in process right now, which means some of the class names and APIs may change over time. So don't get too focused on what the class names are, for instance. Um, instead, the overall concepts are pretty well baked right now. It's what we're going forward with. Um, so that is what we're talking about today. So what I want to do is compare the animation stuff that you saw in the previous episode with Flex 3 to the animation code that that would require in Flex 4. So we can run our Flex 4 application. So you can see it's the same thing except the ball is green here instead of silver. Um, but we've got you know the same uh, capabilities of doing the squash. We've got the stretch happening there as well. We've got the ability to exaggerate everything and slow down the time and stretch it out. Uh, a bit more so you can actually see the thing uh, happening a little bit easier. So now let's look at the code. So if we take a look at what we did in Flex 3, so we had the bouncing animation, which said, okay, I want to move this thing down uh, with a cubic ease, and then I want to move it uh, back up with a cubic ease out function, right? Simple stuff, we're just animating a single property, the ball Y property, uh, over time from the top of the screen down to the bottom of the screen, and then we're doing the reverse animation to get it back to the top of the screen again. In Flex 4, we have the concept of uh, repeating behavior, and uh, effects can now, you can, you can tell them to repeat themselves, and you can tell them whether you want them to loop, go back to the beginning and start again, or whether you want them to repeat, uh, sorry, reverse in time. Um, and that's a useful thing in animations like this. So for instance, we have an FX animates uh, effect. FX animate is a very generic effect. It's the superclass of all the new effects, and it will basically animate a set of properties that you pointed at. Um, in this case, we only care about one property. We're going to be animating the ball Y property. Um, but we're going to animate this thing. The target is going to be the ball panel. We're going to last for a duration of 1,000 milliseconds times the duration factor, which uh, is amplified if, if we click on the exaggerate checkbox. Um, and the repeat behavior, this is the new thing, is going to be a reverse. So when we get down to the bottom, we want you to turn around and go back to the top. We're going to do a repeat count of zero, which means we're just going to run and run and run infinitely. And we're going to have an easer of a cubic ease in. Now, this is equivalent to the old uh, cubic dot ease in function reference that we would pass around for the old effects. In the new effects, we're actually working with instances uh, instead. So there's a set of new effect classes, uh, new easing classes, that all implement the same uh, iEaser interface. And this is one of them. So we have a cubic class, implements that interface, um, and we declare it up here. Cubic ease in is declared with an exponent of 3. It's actually a power ease. Um, but we get the cubic behavior by saying, well, I want your exponent to be 3, 3 as in cubic. Uh, and we want the ease in fraction to be 1. So it's going to ease in all the way. We have the opposite ease here declared. Cubic ease out is an exponent of 3 with an ease in fraction of 0. And then for kicks, we use a linear uh, ease down there as well. And so we just declare a linear here. And linear is simply a, a linear motion over time. Um, there's no easing whatsoever. Uh, so in particular here, we say, okay, your easer is going to be a cubic ease in, so we're going to bounce down, uh, accelerating all the way. And then when we hit the bottom, we're automatically going to re reverse and go back up to the top. And the ease is going to reverse as well, so we're going to decelerate all the way up to the top. Um, so the important thing to note here is that uh, unlike in Flex 3, uh, in Gumbo, we actually have a single effect running. We don't need a sequence that runs um, with one effect running and then the reverse of that effect that we had to code up and run. Instead, we have a single effect um, that we told to reverse, and it knows what to do. 
So if we move on to the squasher effect, this one uh, animated the Y property of the ball so that it went down from the top of the screen down to the bottom. And then it did a squashing effect um, where it changed all four properties, the width and the height and the X and the Y, all in tandem. Um, and then it basically did the, the same thing in reverse, right? So then it unsquashed and then it moved back up to the top. So if we look at the gumbo version of that thing instead, Here's the squasher, so you can see uh, the difference in code size here. Here's the flex three effect for doing squash. Um, and the, the amount of code here comes from the fact, a couple of things. One is that we need a separate effect for every property, and we also need to double the number of effects because um, half of them are just a reverse of the ones that we had going down. Um, whereas in gumbo, here is the whole thing. Uh, so here we have one animation declared, which is going to get this ball from the top of the screen down to the bottom. And this is essentially what we saw above in the simple bouncing animation. Um, we've got a cubic ease in. We're going to be animating uh, one property, the ball Y, declared in our animation property, uh, property of the FX animate effect. Um, and we're going to be moving from zero down to the bottom of the screen. Uh, very simple. The, the key, though, is that we have a repeat behavior of reverse, which means that it's going to get down to the bottom and it's going to bounce back up. But uh, we don't want it to bounce immediately back up because what we want to do instead is squash down at the bottom and then unsquash and then bounce back up. So we have a repeat delay, um, which is equivalent to the amount of time that we're going to be spending squashing and then unsquashing. So it's going to get down to the bottom. It's going to sit there and wait for 400 milliseconds times this duration factor if we're exaggerating the motion. Um, and then the thing in the meantime is squashing and unsquashing, and when it's done with that, 400 milliseconds will have passed, and we'll start the reverse um, to send this thing back up to the top of the screen. And then our squashing animation similarly is one animation instead of two because we just declare the repeat in line and say, okay, I want you to reverse this squash um, to unsquash it. And we also have one effect declared. So instead of before in Flex 3, we have animate property that will act on uh, one property. We have um, the superclass of all the new effects is called FX animate. And it's a lot like animate property, except it'll handle an arbitrary number of properties. So we say, OK, here's our FX animate effect. And here are the four properties that we're going to change. We've got the Y, we've got the height, we've got the X, we've got the width. Um, and here are the values that we want to animate from and to. Uh, and then we're done with that. Um, and they're automatically going to reverse on the fly and do the right thing. And then finally, we have our stretcher uh, effect. And in Flex 3, here's what the stretcher looked like. We had a downward motion that was going to be stretching the height at the same time. Then we had the squash that we've seen before down at the bottom of the screen. And then we have the reverse of those to unsquash and then to send the thing back up to the top of the screen. In Gumbo, uh, the stretcher effect is all here, quite a bit smaller because of the ability to have single effects with multiple properties, as well as the ability to reverse on the fly. Um, so we have a single effect that's going to send this thing down and stretch because the FX animate will handle two different properties at the same time. So it's going to be changing the Y property of the ball to send it down the screen. It's also going to be changing the height of the ball over time uh, in parallel. So that is the downward motion. And then we have the squashing motion, which is pretty much like before. Uh, we say, OK, we have an FX animate um, that's going to be acting on the following properties with height x and y. Um, and we're going to reverse that on the fly. And again, in the stretcher, as, just as with the squasher, uh, we have a repeat behavior of reverse so that it reverses on the fly. But there is a repeat delay so that when it gets down to the bottom, it waits for the squashing effect to be finished before it actually starts reversing to the top. The squasher, we actually want to reverse on the fly as soon as it finishes. So we have a repeat behavior, but the repeat delay is zero because we want it to unsquash as soon as it's done. Uh, and that is it. Um, the rest of this stuff is uh, just as we saw it in previous episodes for just moving the ball around on the screen. So the interesting part here is how the new effects work in Gumbo and how, hopefully, it's a lot easier to declare these effects and get the motion uh, and animation that you want in your applications. If you want to see this code and other related stuff, check out my blog at graphics-geek.blogspot.com.